Hey everyone, this is Facebook Live. I'm doing a Q&A today. I'm just going to talk music, talk guitars, talk the Indiegogo campaign. Um, I'm just kind of waiting around to see if anybody shows up. Um, let's see, in the meantime, we're at just about 30% of the way, which is really cool for the Indiegogo campaign. Um, we're almost there. We're, we're, we're getting there. So um, mainly if you have anybody who would like the music, anybody who might like the style of music, share it with them. Um, because again, if we don't reach the goal, then uh, nothing happens. We don't have t-shirts, we don't have CDs, uh, and no music. So if we get to the goal, then we get music and t-shirts and lots of fun things. And everybody's happy. Um, so I see a few people are here. Say hi if you're here. Um, I don't know who is. I can't see comments. Let's see. No, I don't want to write a comment. Uh, well, hopefully the comments pop up. Um, but yeah, say hello if anybody has any questions um, about guitar, music, um, anything, fashion, sparkles. <laughs> I like sparkles. We all know this. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited. I've been I've been super um, excited to release the Indiegogo campaign. Uh, it was a little bit, you know, scary for me because. Uh, I haven't put out new music in a while, but I figured if we don't check it out, if we don't try to do it, then we don't know, ever know if it'll happen. So that's why I just went for it, and I'm, I'm really excited to see how far we've come. It's awesome. All of the support has been great um, to see everybody very supportive and sharing and sharing around. Um, so that's been awesome. I'm trying to think of anything else. I know I've had a few questions already. Um, let's see. So we have... Let's look at one of our questions. Oh, we have two questions. Uh, when am I coming to Germany? Hopefully soon. Hopefully very soon. Um, if the time is right, I'll definitely come to Germany. The more people that want me to come, I'll definitely travel out and come play a show. Um, another question is, what are your specs on the ESP uh, uh, Silver Sparkle? So, on this Silver Sparkle that I'm holding right here, this is an ESP Eclipse. Um, it's got an ebony fretboard, and in the pickups, of course, I've got EMGs, um, 81 and 85, and yeah, I, I remember um, finding this guitar in a guitar shop, and it caught my eye right away, and it was the only impulse bought guitar that I have. So the other guitars that I have, I've, I uh, mapped it out, and I thought about it if I really wanted it and why. This one, I saw it and I knew it was the one. <laughs> so I'm sure a lot of us have that same situation where we, where we see a guitar and we know it's the one. So this was the one for me. And yep, it's just an ESP Eclipse. I saw it and I knew I've played Eclipses before, so I knew the fit would be great. Um, the uh, neck on the guitar is, is nice and slim, so that's easy. And just how it, how it fits when I play it, it's perfect. So those are the specs of the ESP Silver Sparkle. Uh, let's see... I have a question here. Favorite guitar player? Hmm. Favorite guitar player? Uh, definitely a lot of you probably could answer this. Uh, favorite guitar player would be Jimmy Page um, from Zeppelin, just because uh, he's the reason why I'm here, the reason why I got started with guitar. Uh, before, before I started guitar, I was always into music, but I never really noticed the guitar. I never really paid attention to it. I knew it was there, but then one day I heard some Zeppelin and I thought, yeah, I gotta play some guitar. I, I gotta learn how to do that. So from, since then, it's been an obsession and I think a lot of us can say the same. So favorite guitar player, Jimmy Page. Um, but I mean, if, if we're talking specific genres, then we can, we can go in depth on that. But that's my answer to favorite guitar player. Let's see another question. Let me scroll through. What's the biggest lesson I've learned as a musician? Hmm, lots of lessons, I think. And as, as a guitar teacher myself, um, hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, let me know if you can't hear me. Oh, <laughs> um, cool, okay. I just want to make sure, because I know sometimes the iPhone microphone, uh, when it's standing, it doesn't. There we go, good. So, uh, biggest lesson. So, uh, you know, as a teacher, th there are a lot of lessons you can learn from guitar, discipline, um, goal setting and that can transfer into you know when you're younger and you play an instrument that can transfer over to other things you know as you grow up um, biggest lesson I've learned would probably be that the instrument that I'm learning is a lifelong journey um, 
there's always going to be somebody who's better than me and it's important to recognize that no matter who you are there is always a player who's one step ahead and it's important to learn from them learn from the next step up so you can you can master your instrument in the end but I think it learning that it's a lifelong journey and it's not um, okay let's get to this one point and then we're done playing guitar and we can be done it's forever you know guitar is forever and I think that's a cool realization that that I've had um let's see if I could collaborate with anyone alive or dead mm. man this is a tough one this yeah uh, alive or dead, um, Tom Petty. Tom Petty, number one, definitely. Uh, I have another question. Uh, Moxie reunion. So, a reunion with Moxie and the Influence, uh, will it happen? That's a good question. <laughs> if the time is right, yes. If the time is right, absolutely. I'd love to. I'd love to go play with my, my best friends again. Uh, but for now, everyone's kind of doing their own thing, and, and nobody fought, nothing bad happened. Everyone just kind of wanted to go their separate ways, but yeah, if if the time is right, sure, you know, when the time comes. Um, let's see. Um, I'm looking for more questions. Do I have a certain approach or method when writing music? Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, for me, I tend to go to the guitar first, so I think of a guitar um, um, rhythm line or lead line, and I go from there. Maybe, um, maybe it's a melody on the guitar. Um, sometimes it'll start with lyrics or an idea. So let's say we want to write, I don't know, I can't think of anything, but about a heartbreak or something like that, and I have that in mind, then we'll go from there. Um, but usually it starts with kind of a riff. You can kind of tell a lot of the songs are riff based. So, you know, I'll kind of go off of that riff and, and, and go from there and then fit lyrics into it as we go. But it totally depends. It definitely depends on the situation, but it's all guitar based. So I tend to go off of the guitar parts first and then cater everything around it, have the drums come in, you know, and, and, and go from there as far as melody and everything. So. Hello, Keith. Hi. <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm trying to read on a very small phone. Favorite rock gig I've played. Hmm. Favorite rock gig. That's a good question. I'm trying to think of all of them. There's there's so many, and a lot of them have been incredibly, incredibly fun. Um, the most fun time I've had is at Rocklahoma. In, in prior Oklahoma and it was really fun just the, the vibe of everybody there everybody's there to listen to music have fun enjoy um, and it's a carefree environment so that's number one for me is playing Rocklahoma I'm sure there's a few Rocklahoma uh, fans here listening or avid Rocklahoma concert goers uh, I hope to come back soon I would love to I think that'd be really fun hi Ruben <laughs> I am scrolling through these comments let's see Let's see. Okay, so as far as inspiration and getting back into guitar, that can be tricky because I think a lot of times when we when we play guitar, um, you know, unless you're unless you're jamming with a friend, you're by yourself. You know, you're 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 playing on your own, and it's very easy to listen to your your playing or listen to your thoughts and think, I'm not good at this. I'm not good at this. But in reality, the more you play guitar and the more you work on specific things, the better you're going to get. So it's a tough, it's a tough situation because you're working against your own head. Um, so as far as getting back into it, it can be tough because you, you know, it's easy to go, ah, I don't want to play today. That's not, and I don't need to. I don't sound good anyway. I, I tell myself that everyone does. <laughs> everyone has it because we're in our own head. So the best thing to do is kind of get out of your head. Maybe, you know, find a time that's best for you. For me, I'm, I'm the best in the morning. I'm, I'm awake in the morning. Um, I'm excited about the day, you know, I'm ready to get stuff done. Um, when it's, when it's late at night and, and you're done with work and everything, I, I don't want to play guitar. <laughs> you know, I get a little bit, okay, I'm tired. So morning is the best time for me and I know it. So I capitalize on that, you know, and maybe, maybe morning's the best time, but another way, you, you know, you could go about it, just listen to songs that got you started on guitar. You know, that, that's a common question or a common um, way to approach it. Um, so yeah, like let's you know, for me I got started on Zeppelin, so you know, you might just put Zeppelin on loop 
and there's a good chance that you're going to want to pick up the guitar if you, after you listen for a while. Um, so think of that. Um, that, that, that. That's a great way too. Um, and then also like, you know, maybe schedule a jam with a friend, you know, schedule a jam with, with your drummer friend or a guitar player friend. And that could um, help you to kind of get in the, in the zone of playing guitar again. But again, it is making it a habit too. So if you do like 10 minutes here and there, you know, maybe maybe every few days, every other day you'd play 10 minutes, sooner or later you're going to find yourself doing 20 minutes and then 30 minutes and then you're back in it, you're back in the, in the feel of guitar again. So hopefully that helps, but you know, let me know where you're at with it and then we can go from there and figure out other ways to go about it. Let's see, scrolling more. This, uh, this, this is an ESP, it, it's, it's not custom, it's just the, uh, ESP Silver Sparkle, and it's ESP Eclipse. Um, it's not custom, even though, you know, I saw it, and, and it seems one of a kind to me. <laughs> um, it is one of a kind to me. I know they have a few others, they've got, um, a purple sparkle, which is gorgeous. Um, and then they, I've seen a red sparkle, so there's quite a few. Um, but yeah, you can't, you can't go wrong with sparkles. I have my eyes on the purple sparkle. We'll see if that happens, but I definitely love the silver because it matches everything. Um, so I care about my outfit, even though I'm probably going to be wearing black. <laughs> um, I think it matters. So cool. Yes. Rocklahoma. Yep. Love Rocklahoma. If you haven't gone to Rocklahoma, go. It is, it is incredibly fun. You'll have a new love for music afterwards. Let's see. Oh my gosh, lots of Rocklahoma. I love it. I love it. Are the songs on the EP selected or are you still picking them? Hmm. I'm still picking a few. I mean, I have I have the main ones that I want. Um, we're going to have, um, you know, the standard heavy rock songs, you know, rock and roll inspired, um, classic rock metal, all of that. Um, we will have, I'm planning to have a lot of female vocals on this, so I know I've worked with Moxie quite a bit. We're going to have other singers too, so that'll be really fun. And then um, I'm planning a ballad, a little bit of a ballad on there, so a little bit of variety, but um, really fun songs. I think you'll really like them. So I am still deciding, you know, nothing's final yet, because Again, the Indiegogo isn't over, so um, we're still kind of finalizing everything. But if we reach the goal, then everyone will get to hear it, and we'll get to hear what you know what the EP sounds like, which I think would be really exciting. And I'm excited to hear everybody else's thoughts too. Um, let's see. Scroll. It's really hard to scroll all through all these. <laughs> Oh, do I have any plans on signing up with another band? That's a really good question. Um, yeah, yeah, I, to I totally would. If my thing right now is I want, um, I want everybody to be on the same page, and I want to, you know, be in a band where we're collectively working all together, um, and I want to have fun. So, bottom line, if I'm having fun, then I'm all for it, you know, and and. Yeah, of course, if the time is right, but I definitely want, you know, I want to get along with everybody and, you know, last thing you want is when you're a band, in a band and nobody likes each other. That's not fun. So, yes, if, if, if the time is right and everything comes together, of course I'd be in another band. Of course. Oh my gosh, so many people. Hi, Joe from Canada. Awesome. Oh, nice. We found a... Silver Sparkle Les Paul. Awesome. Awesome. I know Gibson's got some great uh, Silver Sparkle Les Paul guitars. I, every Sparkle guitar looks amazing. I know there's some from Gretsch too. Uh, they're gorgeous. For me, I just, this one was fate with me, so I found this one. <laughs> um, I have some more questions over here too. Let's see. Okay, so uh, along with the campaign, what can your fans do to support your music? Right now, the best thing you can do if, if you want to help support is share, share, share the campaign. Share it with, you know, anybody who who might like the music or would be willing to support because um, if we get to that goal, then, then it'll be really exciting and we'll all get some, you know, we'll, we'll all head to the studio. Everybody's invited. If you could show up, you're coming. Um, and we'll, we'll have some, you know, write some music, 
and have some t-shirts which will be really exciting and I know everyone has been looking for CDs and so with all of this we handle all that and everybody gets you know CDs and t-shirts and all the fun stuff and um, uh, hold up I have got more more questions um so uh speaking before I before I answer more questions um speaking of goodies and special prizes I'll be doing a giveaway tomorrow okay so look out for tomorrow um I've got some really fun stuff so you can get with this giveaway I've got some bracelets that you can get a pair of bracelets I've got some guitar picks some jazz threes I've got some uh I love jazz three so that's why some elixir strings and uh, a free guitar lesson okay so if you are looking to move ahead in guitar you've been playing for a long time or you want to start guitar um, that's what I'll be giving away tomorrow so if you look out tomorrow um, I'll post how you can enter and how you can win and I'll pick the winners um, I'm still thinking when um, maybe a week maybe we'll go for a week depending on um, how long we want to go for but yes that's all how that'll happen so a bunch of guitar goodies some strings some picks um, and then uh, a guitar lesson if you want it a Skype lesson by the way um, I, I, I wish I was a genie and I could pop everywhere but and pop up and show up and give you a guitar lesson but it's got to be on Skype <laughs> cool so hopefully that's cool with everyone that'll be really exciting so tomorrow I will uh, announce that and you will see how to enter all right cool do you play other name guitars besides ESP? Yes, I do. I have um, I have a few Fenders, so I have a Fender Telecaster and a Strat, and then um, I have a few Gibsons as well, Gibson Les Pauls. So um, mainly, you know, I, I, I tend to be a Les Paul player, um, and I, I played Gibson for a very long time, or I still do. Um, but when I found ESP, I found it was a little more um, slim, you know, on the, on the neck size, and then, um, just the way it, it fit when I played it and, and the weight, you know, this guitar, I, I barely changed everything, any, anything on this guitar. So the way it fit with me, it just worked best. And so that's why I tend to go towards this guitar, but you know, nothing beats that, um, that Les Paul custom. So I love that. I love that just as much. You know, you can't pick a favorite guitar. Um, I definitely can't. So it just depends, depends on, you know, what you're recording at the time or what you're working on, what type of gig you're playing on the choice of guitar that you're choosing so I definitely play others but mainly play, play the ESP quite a bit <laughs> cool what are some other musicians you'd like to collaborate with oh my gosh I don't know that that's a tough question that's a really tough question I'm uh, and I don't know if this is a great answer but uh, I'm happy to collaborate with anybody you know I've, I've written a few songs for some for some people and I played guitar on some tracks and it's been it's been really fun so that, that's what I enjoy you know seeing collectively a song come together whether it's my song or somebody else's so I'm cool with anything I, I, I'd be happy to you know create some music and put it out there and that's really fun um, cool so hopefully I'm hoping I'm not missing any questions I'm trying to scroll through and find anything um, but yes, I'm just, I see lots of Rocklahoma people, sweet, love it, all of you that I've known for a very long time, this is awesome, cool, so, yes, yeah, so, um, oh wait, no, I got another question, sorry, uh, what do I do when you get writer's block, writer's block, hmm, this is tough because again we come to we come to that part where we're um, stuck in our own head again, and that's definitely what writer's block is. You're sitting in your own head, and you're going, "Ah, oh, this song, this song sucks. This song doesn't sound good. Uh, why, why would I even share this song?" And it's very easy to to get into that. So you have to, you know, either push that aside and know that that we tend to talk like that. You know, I tend to talk like that to myself. So either know, like, "Eh, why don't I just go ahead with this anyway? Why don't I write this song?" it may turn out great you know you never know so you can do that I know a lot of people say you know they always say go for a walk which I think could help it depends um, or uh, or sometimes like working out or going for a run helps because then you come back and you feel a little bit energized um, but it depends or you know listening going back to your roots again I think that always helps because you'll hear a lot of my songs are very uh, classic rock oriented and kind of just down to the bare bones rock and roll with some other elements, but um, 
if you go back to your roots, I think that tends to, you know, bring us back to where, why you started, why you started writing that song, why you write the type of music that you do. So that might help too. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think that's the best way to go about it and, or just know that, that writer's block is okay and try some different things, you know, try some different, um, elements or different instruments in there. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay. Let's see what time we got. Okay, good. So do I play any other instruments? That's an awesome question. Um, I do. So, uh, before I played guitar, I, I played piano. So I still play a little bit of piano, um, mainly when I'm writing um, orchestral pieces, so pieces for an orchestra, or when I'm doing film music, so that I will write on a, on a keyboard. Um, but once I switched to guitar, or moved towards the guitar, um, that was the main instrument that I really, really loved. Um, but I love everything, and, and um, I write a little bit of drums here and there, and, and vocal lines and everything, but mainly I leave it up to, you know, the other artists who are working with me to, to make it better. I mean, I have ideas in my head, but I, but I let everybody else kind of do their own thing. Um, cool. If you had a choice, would you rather play rhythm or lead guitar? Ooh, that's an awesome question. Um, I'd rather play rhythm. I think, I think that's where I'm most comfortable. Um, but again, I have to think, you know, you got to think outside the box a little bit, you know, I don't, I don't always play the leads, but I tend to, when I write, I always write the rhythm part first. You know, I'm always write, writing a little bit of a riff, writing a little bit of a, you know, maybe a melody line, but it's, I don't write the solo first. That always comes, you know, later down the road. So definitely I'd be, I'd be a, I'd be a rhythm player. Um, although lead is very fun. Lead is very fun and, and, and I love playing lead guitar, but rhythm comes first, definitely. Oh my gosh, so many questions. I'm so excited. Um, are there any good venues in your area with uh, for good for local touring bands? Uh, yes, so in LA, there's there's quite a few venues. Um, you know, of course, you know Whiskey A Go Go, which is in LA, and then um, there there are a few others. I'm trying to think um, off the top of my head, but yeah, absolutely. There there are a whole bunch over here that you could you know contact and and you know come back down on on your tour route, but. Um, yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, very cool. Awesome. Good, good, good. Awesome, cool. I think I have. Let me make sure I didn't miss any over here. Uh, okay, I love this question. Um, so if you were to, uh, how many pairs of boots would you bring if you were to wear on stage? Uh, when you tour, like how many would I absolutely need to bring? Uh, and, and this cracks me up because in the past, the biggest thing when traveling is you deal with, um, the weight of your suitcase, right? When you're going on flights, you have to like, think about the weight of your suitcase. And, um, so in the past, I've only been able to bring one pair of boots, <laughs> maybe like maybe one pair of boots and then wear a pair of boots. But, um, so in the past, I've only had one or two pairs. If I could bring more, uh, yeah, I'd probably pick, like, maybe three pairs. I don't need more than three pairs of boots because, uh, number one, um, the, the main color of boot that I wear when I wear shoes is black, <laughs> or rose gold shoes, but, um, black, so, I mean, if I could have ten pairs of black boots, that'd be awesome, but, uh, you only need one pair, so, and mainly black, just because I was probably being easy on on um with the outfits that I wear I was like okay I gotta bring black because I only have one pair of shoes that I can bring so I thought that was really funny um yeah but if if I had all all, all the room in the world to bring all the shoes uh yeah I'd bring like 20 pairs <laughs> um if you had any chance to master any instrument would you stick with the guitar or would you master another Ooh, this is awesome thank you Jim this is this is super cool um Yes, I'd stick with guitar. Absolutely. I'd totally stick with guitar, um, but what some people don't know is I love the cello. So I really love, and you'll hear um, way back when, when I was working with uh, Moxie, we wrote a song called Bella's Song. And that we, I wrote some cello for that, and it sounded beautiful. So I love the sound of the cello, um, but that being said, cello is very different from guitar. So I'd absolutely stick with guitar for the rest of my life, but I'd like to learn other instruments along the way. It's just a matter of having the time. 
uh, what do I do for inspiration? That's a that, that's a super good question because I think a lot of times the song ideas just happen. Um, but I like to carve out time that that I can work on songs. So again, like I said before, if it's in the morning, um, just you know, play some guitar in the morning, have that set that you're like, okay, I'm going to work on a song from this time to this time. Because um, for me, I can find it very overwhelming to, to okay, I need to write the best song ever right now and I only have like a day to do it. That's too, that's too overwhelming. So I just kind of carve out time and go, hey, this is, this is the songwriting time that I work on and, and maybe something happens, maybe doesn't, but at least now that I set the time, then, then I can write music. But, uh, a lot of times when you're in the songwriting mode of here I'm writing music all the time, you don't have to, I don't have to look for inspiration, I just am in the zone of writing, you know, so all the time I'm constantly thinking here's what I want to write, here's what I want to write, so it depends, but inspiration definitely, you know, going to concerts, going to shows, seeing other bands, you know, watching other players, I think that can be very inspiring too, so on the other end, that as well. Um, oh my gosh, so many questions, this is awesome, this is awesome guys. All right, let's see. Uh, uh, Alan, I want to learn the harp as well. I would love to learn the harp. I think it's beautiful, um, absolutely beautiful. Uh, I, I just need, we need more time. I need more time to learn the harp. I'm, I'm, I know that's very intricate and everything that happens. Um, I could probably write for the harp, but playing it is different. <laughs> um, Okay, what are some words of wisdom for females getting into the music industry? That's a really good question. You know, I, I really like that question because it can seem, you know, a little overwhelming, but there, there are so many female guitar players right now. I think over the years, um, I mean, I remember I was, I was the only girl in guitar class, um, and that never really shook me up. I was just... I was just okay with it, you know, because I think I was probably so distracted that I wanted to play guitar. You know, that's all I was there for, to learn guitar, learn guitar. So I think if you're in that mindset, you know, you get, you get in a different zone of, you know, you're just here to play guitar. Every Everybody, you know, learns the same notes. We can all play, you know, we can all learn, have the potential to learn as everybody else. So, um, yeah, I think, I think, and, and there's so many uh, amazing female guitarists now that there are so many role models, you know, no matter who you're, you know, who, who you're watching or what you're into in every genre, there are, there are many, many female guitar players. So they're there, they're there, we're all there. Um, so that's all I have for that. Um, would you rather, I <laughs> like this awesome, it's not music related, uh, would you rather, uh, go to space or meet an alien? Um, I'd rather go to space. Uh, I don't know about meeting an alien. I think that would be uh, not very exciting. I think it would be more scary than anything. But, I mean, um, yeah, as far as a language barrier, I don't know. I'd probably go to space. Probably just go to space. I think that would be awesome. Uh, Danny says, what kind of practicing do you do? Um, it depends. It totally depends. Uh, in the past, I've been very um, strict about about a practice regimen, which I think can be very helpful um, as far as as far as moving one, from one place to another. Um, so I'd you know carve out three hours and have every minute uh, scheduled, which worked. I think for the time when I was when I was a little bit younger, it worked for for what I wanted to do. Um, now a lot of it is just um, is a lot of songwriting and a lot of you know playing solos or getting ready for shows. So then I carve out the time then and and if there's something I need to get out of the solo or if there's a little tricky part, then I use that time to to get better at it. But I think I've changed over the years and I remember talking this um, talking about this on the musicians podcast um, a while back that I think we change a little bit you know in certain certain. Um, practice techniques that we used in the past may not work in the future so you know you might have to adjust depending on depending on the situation you're in but right now I mainly like to keep it like you know block off a few hours and then and then go from there and if there's certain aspects that I need to work on then I work on those but right now you know in the in, right now with the Indiegogo and everything I'm in songwriting mode so I'm, I'm fixing up all those songs that that I have ready for the EP and yeah, so if we if we get there, that'll be that'll be super exciting. But uh, again, I don't know since everybody's here, we're at about thirty percent of the way on on the Indiegogo campaign. Um, 
and I'll also I'll comment the link here if anybody needs it but yeah so we're we're, we're getting there but we gotta keep we gotta keep going so if, if you know anybody that would want to support um, or if you have any questions let me know but we gotta just keep going if we get to 100% then new music comes out and I think that'll be really fun oh cool Jared's ring shop shared the link so click the link that Jared ring shop just commented and you can go to the Indiegogo um, Yes, awesome, awesome, awesome. This is perfect. Um, cool. So for anybody that uh, uh, has just shown up, if you're just joining us, um, I will have a giveaway. I will announce it tomorrow, and we'll have um, some bracelets that you can win, some guitar picks, uh, jazz threes these are, and some elixir strings, and then also a... Um, uh, Skype lesson from me. So if you're looking to start guitar or if you have a guitar and you haven't started and you want to learn or if you want to just, you know, learn some new techniques on guitar, uh, everybody uh, can enter to win that. So I'll announce that tomorrow um, and we will go from there. Cool. Awesome. I've been getting a lot of um, uh, a lot of love for the new song and I'm really excited that everybody loves it. Uh, Strength in Me it's called, so if you haven't heard it, uh, there's a link uh, that Jared's Ring Shop commented and it's to the Indiegogo. You can click on that link and hear a little bit of the song, um, uh, the new song Strength in Me. If you like it, then um, you can, if you support the campaign, then I'll send you the song right away so you get a download of the song. Um, so whether we reach the goal or not, I will still send you that link and you'll get the song um, from there and you can download it. So yeah, so, so that's how it works, but um, I'm really excited. I think I think the more we, we work at this, then we'll get that goal and it'll be, it'll be amazing to see. Um, yes, yeah, so I just mentioned Jazz 3's. Um, is that my favorite pick currently? Yes. Oh, hi Matt. <laughs> um, my my fellow Harry Potter and guitar sparkle lover, um, we love we love sparkles and Harry Potter. Um, yeah, so Jazz Threes, Jazz Three. Uh, I have been using them for a very long time from Dunlop. Um, so I use Jazz Threes, and then also I don't think I oh I have one right here. Um, I've been using uh, the Dunlop Flow picks as well. So I've been using though they're a little bit if you if you look at them they're a little bit thicker. Um, so they're pretty thick and they're a little bit bigger than the Jazz 3's but um, I like both. I like both, you know, these are a little bit newer so I've been using them re recently but Jazz 3's have been my main, um, my main guitar pick for a very long time. Yes, very cool. Jazz picks, cool. Oh my gosh. I am going to, um, I'm running out of words to say. <laughs> running out of words as everybody is asking questions. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, cool. Jim asked a very perfect question. Um, how many hours do you spend just playing with ideas before you settle on something? Um, if you know the real me, I, I am a super perfectionist. So I'll spend forever and ever and ever thinking on ideas and thinking it's not perfect so the answer is forever <laughs> but eventually you understand you know I have to choose um, I have to I have to choose on something before before it can be released so otherwise I'm gonna have all these songs that never get shared and that's not fun so eventually I choose something and and it gets released but uh, yeah for I mean for for the solo on strength in me if anybody has listened um, it, it took me a little while to get that solo and I remember going back and forth between ideas and I wasn't quite sure but then again you know the best way to go is simple simple you know melodic as far as solos go so I went with just a simple melodic solo that added to the song you know so it depends on the song and and I just want to any idea I add I just want to make sure I don't take away take away from the song because last thing you want is you know I don't know an annoying guitar part when you're trying to listen to the amazing vocals by Moxie Ann. So I try not to make anything annoying. I want it to add to the song. Perfect. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. So I've got, um, let's see any more questions. I'm scrolling through. Let's see. Cool. 
Good, good, good. So if anybody has a question, I'll answer. Um, and if not, then then we'll be done. <laughs> no, I think I answered all these. I want to make sure. Yep. Let's see. <laughs> cool. Everybody's good. Let's see. Um, yeah, I think I, I think I answered all these. Am I am I coming to Barcelona, please? Um, yes, I, I I hope so soon. I hope so very soon. I'll when 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 the time is right and and you know when things come together. But right now we're just you know we got to get some get some music out first. So get those get the songs out, get the EP going, and and we'll go from there. What my current favorite amp again from Matt. Um, my favorite amp right now, I go back and forth between a lot. Um, right now it's the 5150 by, or 5152 by PV. Um, that's my favorite amp right now as far as live and in the studio. Um, in the studio I also add the JCM 900 from Marshall. And then um, depending on depending on the situation I might, you know, add more different, different amps. But right now the 5152 is, is my favorite. So, there we go. Cool. Well... I, I'm super excited that everybody, you know, has had some questions and, you know, tuned in, said hello. Um, oh, we have more questions. <laughs> um, cool. So, uh, from Larry, what made you decide that you wanted to learn guitar? So, uh, hi, Mick. <laughs> um, so, what made me want to decide? So, I've told this story uh, quite a few times, so it's kind of funny, but, um, when I was younger, I don't know how old I was, could have been 11 or 12, uh, I remember listening to the radio, and I, and I, I grew up on really good music, great music, classic rock, and, and, and funk, and Motown, so I wasn't deprived of music, but, um, uh, all of a sudden I remember hearing Black Dog by Zeppelin on the radio, and I was just, I stopped, I stopped at everything, I'm like, what is this noise? This noise is, is awesome, both, you know, really cool and kick-ass and awesome and amazing as far as tone wise and that was the first time that I really recognized what the guitar was and from then I just was obsessed obsessed with it I bugged I bugged my family for a guitar and then got some lessons and um, some of you know the only songs I learned for like the next few years were Zeppelin songs <laughs> so all Zeppelin songs I learned and then and then I branched out from there um, Oh cool, would I do a female G3 with Nita Strauss and Orianthi? Yes, yes, Orianthi's fantastic, Nita is amazing, they're all very, very kind and amazing players, absolutely. Um, I'd totally do it, I think that would be really fun and really exciting for everybody and and just to get, you know, all the female guitar players together and enjoy and play guitar, I think that would be fantastic. What did you decide, or, or uh, how did you decide to do the campaign approach? Um, so the campaign approach was mainly, um, for the Indiegogo campaign, um, that was mainly a decision to um, combine the idea of offering merch, which, which a lot of you have asked for, so I wanted to offer that, and combine the idea of, of releasing new music, which has also been asked. So combine those together, and I knew a lot of people have been asking for it, so in return we kind of do like a pre-order option where you just pre-order the package and if we get if we get to the goal then you get it and and if not then we refund so it's um it was mainly just a combination of all those things so the idea that i wanted to offer merch but um offering merch can be very expensive as far as t-shirts and printing cds and everything that can be very expensive and i wanted to be able to give that out so so we went with the Indiegogo campaign. So again, if we reach the goal, then then we get new music, you know. And if and if we don't reach the goal, then then everyone's refunded. So, you know, it's it's no loss there. But I think it would be fantastic if we reached that goal. Um, how are you handling celeb status? I'm definitely not a celebrity. I'm if you know me, I'm a, I'm I'm a super dork. I'm a guitar nerd. Um, it's really exciting to see every you know all of you be so excited about music, about my music and the songs and and talk guitars. That's really exciting. Um, but I, I I'm just I'm just a guitar player like all of us. That's all. <laughs> That's all. Just just super super dirty and and loving guitar and gear and all of that stuff. So.
Oh my gosh, so many questions, guys. I'm gonna run. <laughs> at some point, I've gotta eat. I've gotta eat at some point. Um, okay, um, your most memorable jam session. Most memorable jam session. Hmm. There's been there's been so many. I mean, um, uh, when I first started out, I had I had a a girl band when I was 15, and that was always really fun. We we jammed, you know, just classic rock songs, and then. Um, Recently, I, I played a little bit with um, uh, Nikki Stevens. Um, you probably know her. Um, she's a bass player, and it was really fun. We just wrote some just really upbeat, upbeat punk rock songs, and that's always been really fun. But every jam session is really fun. Cool, great. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Mo Moxie and I, we we're we're always uh, writing music together. Always, all the time. Um, we're best friends, you know. We're you know we stick together and everything. So we're always calling each other up and going, "Hey, can you help me with this song?" And then I call her and go, "Hey, I need help with this song." Um, and it's great to to have a friend that's that's always there and I can I can talk to and get advice on my song. You know, Moxie's um, almost like the level-headed person in the studio because I'll sit there and I'll panic over um, is this song perfect is this song perfect and I'll turn to Moxie and go is that okay Moxie and she goes yes it's, it's great it sounds great so she's she's good as far as being level-headed in the studio for me because I tend to be very um, I don't know perfectionist OCD whatever you want to call it I tend to be very you know want everything perfect um, but yeah very cool okay so um, yeah, so that that's all I have for today. I just want to check in and say hi. Um, announce the giveaway. So so be on the lookout tomorrow um, for the how to enter in the giveaway. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll send out a post tomorrow. Um, check in probably it'll probably be in the morning. Um, I'm in California, so in the morning in California, and and we'll go from there. But yeah, anybody who enters in the giveaway could win all of the fantastic guitar goodies and um, a Skype guitar lesson. So that'll be good, and then um, yeah, share share the campaign as much as you can. Um, right now, again, we're at about thirty percent. Um, we got a little bit more ways to go. So the more the more we add to it, the better. The more we share around, the more the more music can be shared. So I'm super excited. Uh, thanks, guys, so much for you know saying hello. It's good to see everybody finally talk and and say hi. Um, Yes, perfect, perfect. Okay, cool. So be on the lookout for tomorrow, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye. I don't know how to turn this off. <laughs> um, um, sorry, guys. I'm, I'm stuck here. <laughs> All right, I think I figured it out. Okay, I'm waving just in case. Bye, guys.